Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really, really, really well. So we are having a little bit of a Britney night here on stream and on my channel today. So Britney's memoir is coming out on Tuesday. Do I even need to say Britney Spears? No, Britney. Britney's memoir is coming out on Tuesday and it's called The Woman in Me and I have my copy waiting and if Amazon do not deliver it on Tuesday, <laughs> I'm going to be going into the nearest bookshop and just buying a second copy because it is going to be the first book I'm going to read in a very long time. Um, Britney is not doing the audiobook of it because she said that she didn't want to reread through a lot of the things out loud um so someone else is doing it um so normally i like an audiobook but if it's not britney i'm just gonna read it myself and try to imagine britney um i'm very excited for it uh it has been a long time coming and i can't even imagine the amount of stories that are going to be in it and the amount of people who've tried to stop this book coming um there's been media copies that have been sent out to the press to kind of hype up the book a little bit um, and I kind of want to go through one of these articles. Now, it's not necessarily, this is, if you do not want any spoilers in this book, I mean, click off now. Me, I'm someone that likes to know what I'm getting into, so I feel like prepared. I'm like that with movies, with whatever. Um, so I'm going to do this article and we're we're going to go through it together, figure out the overall media points of the book that are being put out there and kind of get a little taste of the book, okay? Now, also this book, from my knowledge as a Britney fan, has been delayed um, because there were a lot of people that wanted to read the book before it came out. There's a lot of people that are mentioned in it, whether it's relationships, friendships, I mean, the conservatorship. And if you know a little bit of Adam McIntyre lore, um, the Free Britney Day, I think it was like the 12th of July or the 11th of July or something. Or No, that's wrong. The 12th of November, I think, it, or the 11th. I don't fucking know. It was the day when Britney Spears is like final court hearing um, in the conservatorship. It wasn't the final one, but whatever, um, where she got the freedom. I was out in the trenches. I was at the courthouse that day outside. I have a video on my channel about it. That was, I went to LA for the reason of going to that. And it was an incredible day. So I can't wait to read about Britney's perception of that day in the book, knowing that I was there. All right, so let's get to this. The nine biggest takeaways from Britney Spears' memoir, The Woman in Me. The pop star tells all from the details of her conservatorship to the aftermath of her famous relationships. I always love this photo of her from her 2013 album. In her tell-all memoir, The Woman in Me, Britney Spears shares the untold stories of her music career and her 13-year-long conservatorship. 13 years! Leaked details and excerpts from the highly anticipated book have emerged ahead of its October 24th release, so Tuesday. The highlights reveal... Um, Several personal truths about the singer's life, including how public scrutiny affected her mental health, why she decided to end a pregnancy while dating Justin Timberlake, the struggles she faced during her conservatorship, and how she discovered the Free Britney movement. Below, we break down all of the biggest revelations and watch this space for updates. Ooh, they're like, watch this space for updates. A little teaser. A little teaser. Okay. All right. Number one. She burst into tears following her Star Search appearance with Ed McMahon. Wait, the Star Search one that was like the very viral clip of her as like a kid when she's singing? She was 10 years old. What the f Britney Spears describes her 1992 appearance on the famed talent competition where she had an uncomfortable interaction with the host Ed. While speaking with him in a segment on the show, the, o or the host asked if she had a boyfriend. After she replied she didn't because they were mean, the host replied, I'm not mean, how about me? Spears, who was 10 years old at the time, writes that she kept it together until she left the stage. Then she burst into tears, she adds. Well, you can't even imagine as well the pressure in that moment for a 10-year-old and also just how uncomfortable that is for a 10-year-old and also how scary adults are to you whenever you are a 10-year-old. Um... Wow, that's crazy to think that very viral clip of her always singing and to imagine that that was what happened after it. Number two, she wanted to return home and to have a normal life after leaving the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Now, she did that with, let me see how many I can list off. Ryan Gosling, my dream man, love Ryan Gosling. Justin Timberlake, my nightmare of a man. Um, Christina Aguilera.
Anyone else that we like know? It was Britney, Xtina, Justin Timberlake, Ryan Gosling. There was others, but like that we know, no, no, right? Am I? I think so, right? They were all just little babies on that. That's crazy. I mean, the the casting person on that show, fuck me. You did a good job, didn't you? After the singer's 1993 stint on the Mickey Mice Clubhouse, Spears writes that she decided that she wanted to live a normal life in her hometown of Kentwood, Louisiana. However, soon after, a lawyer her mother um, had met on the audition circuit named Larry Rudolph. Boo! Larry Rudolph was her manager throughout all of her career, who was one of the biggest enablers of her conservatorship, who is the absolute... Oh, my God. Larry Rudolph, if you're a Britney fan, you hate this man. He suggested that Britney Spears record a demo. Uh, she went on to win a, a record deal at 15 and Rudolph became her longtime manager. And he was the manager throughout all of the conservatorship, working with the parents closely. We fucking hate him. Spears also describes her time on the Disney variety program, uh, writing that the while the show was unbelievably fun, it was exceptionally hard work with the kids expected to practice choreography and routines 30 times a day. So a quote. Being in the show was boot camp for the entertainment industry, extensive dance rehearsals, singing lessons, acting classes, time in the recording studio, and then doing school in between that, she says. Number three, she began taking Prozac due to the public criticism during her early rise to, fr- er, to fame. Now, what is Prozac? What is Prozac? It's a medicine for um, anxiety and depression. Okay. So she began taking that due to the public criticism at the early stage of her career. Spears recalls the criticism she got in the early days of her career as she faced heightened scrutiny while on tour with NSYNC and publicly dating Justin Timberlake. So she literally would have been, what age was she when she was dating Justin Timberlake? 16, 17, 18, 19, and then... Did they, I think they, they were already, I think they were already broken up by the time she was 20. Maybe I'm wrong with those dates. But I think this time she was 18 during the early days. No, she would have been like 17. They NSYNC'd her because she went on her first tour when she was 17, 18. She went on NSYNC when she was like 17, 18. So yeah, she would have been like 17, 18 um, on, on uh, tour and then taking the Prozac because of the scrutiny. Um she writes that she couldn't help but notice that talk show hosts asked Timberlake different kinds of questions from the ones that she was asked. She says that everyone kept making strange comments about my breasts, she said, wanting to know whether or not I'd have or I'd had plastic surgery. She adds that a pressure only grew as she became a fixture on MTV and the public pressure ultimately led to her starting to take the antidepressant. Uh, so. Now, for me... As a Britney fan, the amount of interviews that I have found when she is literally 18 years old where they will literally say, oh, your boobs are so big. Have you had a boob job? And she's sitting there like, huh, like, what the fuck? I think there was even one whenever she was 17 as well. And by the way, all these like fucking hosts who are like late 50s, late 40s. It just was so fucking disgusting. And that's such a good parallel she makes with she was literally dating Justin Timberlake, had the ex- basically the exact same career as Justin Timberlake, Disney, to, you know, going into mainstream. And Justin Timberlake wouldn't have had a career without Britney Spears, by the way. <coughs> but anyway, the questions he got asked, obviously, as a man, were so different than the ones that she got asked as a woman. But also, we can't really say man and woman here because these people are literally like 17 years old. It feels weird saying that. Number four. So this is the one that's going really viral on social media. Uh, She decided to get an abortion after getting pregnant during her relationship with Justin Timberlake. Spears revealed that she became pregnant during her relationship with Timberlake in the early uh, 2000s. She writes that she didn't view the pregnancy as a tragedy and was conflicted about the decision to end it. Uh, But the Timberlake thought they were too young to have a kid. After some difficult discussions, she agreed not to have a baby, she says. Okay. Let me talk about this because I have an opinion of this and I saw this absolutely everywhere and I want to put my two cents on it and you can agree or disagree with me. So I have seen a lot of people um, being very, very, very hard on Justin Timberlake for this and 
while I agree with that, my problem is not that Justin Timberlake didn't want to be a father at 18. My problem is that Justin Timberlake secretly with Britney had this abortion and then decided to spend the next 15 years of his career, but really the debut of his career, Cry Me a River, the song where he basically says that she was cheating, um, she was lying to him, painted her as this villain. You know, he was the guy. He was liked in the media, obviously. He would talk about his sex life with Britney after they broke up. Like, he literally would go on radio shows talking about, like, the best sex he had and stuff while they had already broken up. And he built his debut of his career. He literally did off of Britney Spears. My problem with Justin Timberlake isn't that Justin Timberlake didn't want Britney Spears to keep the baby. Because ultimately, that was a decision that both of them had to make at the end of the day. And I'm not going to put it on either of them whether they did or didn't want to keep the baby. That's up to them. My problem with Justin Timberlake is that after doing that secretly, he then spent the debut of his career basically pushing her down, slut shaming her, all these different things. And it's like, she was dealing with all of that and you were out doing all that. And somehow she was the villain and you were the loved little puppy in the thing. So that's my problem with Justin Timberlake. That's my problem with Justin Timberlake. I think there's been a lot of discussion about like, did Justin Timberlake force Britney Spears to have an abortion? At the end of the day, the book says that they Britney wanted, she didn't look at it as a tragedy. Justin Timberlake didn't want to be a young father. They ultimately decided not to have it. My problem is with what Justin Timberlake did after they broke up, knowing that all of that had happened, but knowing that the public didn't know it. That's my problem with Justin Timberlake. So Justin Timberlake, go fuck yourself. Let's continue. I also just don't like Justin Timberlake. Sorry. Okay. Um, and she was conflicted about the decision to end it, but the Timberlake thought that they were too young to have a, a kid. Um, after some difficult discussions, she agreed not to have the baby. And also, every time has now kind of been confirmed as being about her baby instead of losing the relationship to Justin Timberlake, which pisses me off even more as a Britney fan because... Everyone said, oh, Cry Me a River was a response to Every Time or whichever one came first. You know, the Britney song, Every Time, literally her best song. Every time I tried to say. And Justin Timberlake's song was about a cheater. Cry Me a River, bitch. Go fuck yourself. And Britney's song was about losing the relationship. Well, Britney's song, Every Time, was actually about losing the baby. So Justin Timberlake was responding to or putting out before a song that was Britney was doing about her lost baby. Justin Timberlake was doing about you being a, a, a fucking slut. Like, you remember all that terminology of women in the 2000s? Slut, whore. Like, that was what his kind of one painted Britney as. Whereas Britney's one was deemed as a breakup song, but was actually about having an abortion. What did he do to Janet? On the Super Bowl halftime show, he ripped open Janet Jackson's... Um, uh, what was it called? Like something that was on like the, her upper bra um, and ex exposed um, titty. And Janet Jackson got shunned from the media. She got shunned from the media. MTV um, blacklisted her music. Every sponsor dropped her. She lost her career for a very long time. And I love Janet Jackson. And Justin Timberlake proceeded to go on like national TV making fun of it. And um, he got away with it and it was just kind of like he he has this consistent pattern of like using and abusing women and um getting away with it and i just absolutely hate justin timberlake i really 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 do not like justin timberlake he is someone who builds his career off of the media's portrayal of women and what i mean by that is he automatically systematically feeds into when it, the bad mouthing of women applies it to his career to then gain public support you're going to call a woman a whore? Well, he dated a whore. You're going to call a woman a slut? Oh, well, his ex is a slut. Like, that's what Justin Timberlake's career, specifically at the start, was. Can you tell I don't like Justin Timberlake? I love Justin Timberlake. Oh, my God. All right. 
So, number five, she recalls her breaking point following her breakup with Justin Timberlake. I'm taking a sip. While recalling her relationship with the singer, Britney Spears describes their connection as magnetic and writes that their breakup left her devastated and fantasizing about quitting show business. She also mentions that Timberlake initiated their split over text message. Now, um, I don't know if it says it here, but the director of Britney Spears is overprotected. You know, I need time, time. You know, my mom loves that song. Justin Timberlake texted Britney Spears on the set of her music video um, and said, it's over, and broke up with her over text. And the director found her crying in the dressing room and was like, show him what he's missing. And she came out of the dressing room and continued filming the music video. And no one knew about that until now. All right, she also recounts her reaction to the release of Timberlake's music video, Cry Me a River, in which a woman who looks like me cheats on him and wanders around sad in the rain. She writes that she felt the media portrayal of her as a harlot who'd broken the heart of America's golden boy, adding, "Um, I was comatose in Louisiana and he was happily running around Hollywood. She also describes her 2003 interview with Diane Sawyer, which we're going to watch in another video, so stay tuned for that. As a breaking point in the midst of the split, she explains that she felt forced by her father and her management to do the interview, during which Sawyer asked um, Britney Spears what she'd done to her ex to cause him so much pain, because of course the woman is the perpetrator and the man would never do anything. Of course, of course, the woman is the one who would make the man feel so much pain without even any further investigation. I felt like I'd been exploited, set up in front of the whole world, she says. We'll get to that interview in a second. Number six, she says the 2007 incidents were her way of pushing back amid her mental struggles at the time. Now, for me, when I look at the 2007 Britney Spears era where she's shaving her head, she's fighting with paparazzi. Have you watched the videos of the paparazzi with Britney Spears day in, day out, stalking her, harassing her, like abusing her? Oh my God, I never, de- I don't even have to be a Britney Spears fan to deem that as anything other than Britney Spears' way of rebelling and to immediately put her in a conservatorship and fucking detain her and all these different things. Okay, well, that goes against the f- entire point of it. Like, what the fuck? Spears recalls some of her most infamous public episodes from the period, including shaving her head and attacking a paparazzi's car with an umbrella. Now, I think this is the first time that Britney is going to be on the record um, talking about this. If you're a Britney fan, you'll know that she talked about this apparently on the Jonathan Ross show in 2016, but they cut it out. Um, so this will be the first time we'll really hear Britney talk about this um, since it happened. So I'm very intrigued. She reveals that these incidents occurred when she was out of her mind with grief following the death of her aunt and her custody battle with her ex-husband, Kevin Federline. Boo, Kevin Federline. Hate him too. With my head shaved, everyone was scared of me, even my mom, she says. Flailing those weeks without my children, I lost it over and over again. I didn't even know how to take care of myself. And it's like, these people did all these things to her and then were like, oh my God, she's acting out. I mean, you've taken her your, her kids off of her. Um, her hu- her husband she's going through a divorce with is trying to sell stories to ruin her life. Um, her family aren't talking to her. Like, seriously, what do you expect of this woman? Sorry, I'm wiping my nose. Like, they literally did everything to make her lose it. And, oh my God, she didn't even lose it, by the way. She was just dealing with what she was given. They wanted her to lose it. She adds, I'm willing to admit that in the throes of severe postpartum depression, which no one wanted to talk about until recently, by the way, the existence of postpartum depression, abandonment from my husband, the torture of being separated from my two babies, the death of my adored Aunt Sandra, and the constant drumbeat of pressure from paparazzi, I'd begin to think in some ways like a child. I can't even imagine going through that. Fucking hell. And your family, like, being the ones... She stopped fighting her conservatorship at one point out of fear of losing her sons, which is such a terrifying thought, by the way, to just, not not anything against her, but that someone 
deems that they have to give up fighting back for their life out of fear of losing your children. Britney Spears recounts in detail her experiences living under a conservatorship, during which time her father, Jamie Spears, controlled not only her finances, but also her physical freedom. She writes that she was shielded from the outside world, always medicated, and never alone, even as she returned to work as a singer. I was too sick to choose my own boyfriend, but I was yet somehow healthy enough to appear on sitcoms and morning shows and to perform for thousands of people in different parts of the world every single week. Isn't that funny? Too sick to choose your own boyfriend, but enough to fucking pay for your family's life. I know I'd been acting wild, but there was nothing I'd done that justified their treating of me like I was a bank robber, she adds. Nothing that justified upending my entire fucking life. She didn't say fucking life, but I wanted to add it because it, this feels like an entire fucking life moment. She also says of her father, from that point on, I begin to think that he saw saw me as put on earth for no other reason than to help their cash flow. Imagine saying that about your parents. Like, that's how... <sighs> Elsewhere in the book, she also recalls her father saying at one point that I'm Britney Spears now. Well, he's on death's door anyway, so let's celebrate that. Hey, if Wendy Williams can say death to all of them, I can say that. He was trying to kill Britney. Sorry. Spears quietly pushed back against the conservatorship over the years, though she says that her feelings and opinions were often ignored or minimized. In one stance, she recounts mentioning the conservatorship during a 2016... Oh my god! What the fuck? I promise you I haven't read this before. I think she's talking about the Jonathan Ross show. Yes, she is! Oh my god, and it never aired! She talks about in a 2016... Jesus, I am a devoted fan. She talks about in a 2016 talk show appearance, adding um, that she talked about the conservatorship. And she says that somehow that part of the interview didn't make it onto the air. Hi, or huh, how interesting. She also writes that at a certain point, her exhaustion and the fear of losing access to her sons led for her to stop fighting. After being held down on a gurney, I knew that they could restrain my body anytime they wanted to. And so I went along with it, she says. My freedom in exchange for naps with my children, it was a trade I was willing to make. Fucking hell. My freedom in exchange for naps with my children. She also adds, The conservatorship stripped me of my womanhood, made me into a child. I became more of an entity than a person on stage. I had always felt music in my bones and in my blood, but they stole that from me now. Okay, so I'm very intrigued by this. She discovers the Free Britney movement in 2018. Spears explains that she first encountered the viral moment in late 2018 when she was made when she was being made to undergo further mental health evaluations, which, by the way, she had no say in, um, and then spend more than three months in a Beverly Hills rehab facility. During that stint, she writes she was prescribed lithium, lithium, and allowed only an hour of television before a 9 p.m. bedtime. We're speaking about Britney Spears here. She was prescribed lithium against her will, held in a rehab center against her will, forced to go through mental health evaluations without wanting to, and allowed one hour television before a 9 p.m. bedtime. Literally like a child. We're talking about the Britney Spears here. They kept me locked up against my will for months, she says. I couldn't go outside. I couldn't drive a car. Um, I had to give blood weekly, which, by the way, had no say in as well. I couldn't even take a bath in private. I couldn't even shut the door to the room I was staying in. While in rehab, Spears says that a nurse showed her clips of fans questioning the need for Spears' conservatorship. That was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in my life, she writes. I didn't think that people knew much about the Free Britney movement, um, or people didn't know how much it meant to me, especially in the beginning. Okay, so this part is interesting to me, and I can't wait to read more about this. So she's saying here that it was one of the nurses that showed her the Free Britney movement 
clips. Now, if you think about that, that's obviously not someone who's on the side of the team that are controlling her. So that's a nurse that is in some way, I don't want to say trying to help her out because this nurse is still doing everything that, you know, Brittany doesn't want done to her. But it would have been very easy for whatever nurse to not show those clips. But the fact that the nurse did, and I'm pretty sure secretly, I can't wait to read more about that. She says, that was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in my life. I don't think people knew how much the movement meant to me specifically in the beginning. In 2021, the singer received the call that her conservatorship was officially over. So this was the day that I was outside the courthouse. Best day ever. Hearing the news from her new lawyer, Matthew uh, Rosengart, while she was in a resort. I felt relief sweep over me, she recalls. The man who had, had scared me as a child and ruled over me as an adult, who had done more than anyone or more than anything uh, to undermine my self-confidence, was no longer in control of my life. I wonder what day that was. I think it was November 12th or something or 11th. Okay, and then this is the final point. Now, I saw a lot of fans upset about this. However, after what we just read, which isn't even the entire book, by the way, are you surprised that Britney Spears does not want to return to music? Like, Britney Spears was held against her will for... ...14 years to record music. It was November 12th. Okay, thank you. So, if Britney Spears doesn't want to release new music... Okay. Okay. As the biggest Britney Spears fan, okay. She doesn't feel motivated to return to music. Spears describes the aftermath of her conservatorship, including her um, estrangement from most of her family. Uh, migraines are just one part of the physical and emotional damage that I now have now that I'm out of the conservatorship, she writes. I don't think my family understands the real damage they did. She also addresses the future of her music career, explaining that, and by the way, if you're reading all of this in the book and then your last question is, oh my God, where's the music career? Then seriously? And by the way, the Britney that you know from the last 14 years of music is not the actual Britney as well. Like I can love those songs from the last 14 years, but they're not songs that she wanted to do. Explaining she does not feel motivated to return to performing. She does mention her collaborative single, Hold Me Closer, Hold me closer, tiny dancer. Uh, with Elton John, who she names as one of her musical heroes. Pushing forward in my music career is not my focus at the moment. She says, it's time for me to not be someone who other people want. It's time for me to actually find myself. Yes, Brittany. Exactly. Exactly. And you know what? I can't wait to read this book. I really can't wait to read this book. I'm going to turn the chat on right now. Who's going to read this book? Who's going to read this book? I'm here for the. I'm like, I, I need this book to arrive early on Monday. I need it too. Look at that. Look at that. Wait, I should be looking here, right? Is that what the chat is? Well, anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I can't wait to read this book. The Woman and Me, it's out on Tuesday. This isn't sponsored, but I love Britney, so I can't wait to read it.